Vaseline is older than you may think. The gooey substance traces its roots back to the mid-1800s, during the first oil rushes of the United States. It wouldn't be long until Vaseline, having been derived from a waste byproduct from oil drilling, became a mainstay in medicine cabinets across the country. All from the unrelenting efforts of one man, who was so incredibly passionate about his Vaseline invention that he would reveal in his 90s that he had been eating it for decades. An amazing story of dedication, marketing ingenuity, and elite business prowess, interwoven through one of the most important discoveries in American history, that of oil, Romer Chesborough found himself at the forefront of late 19th century business, even able to not only survive the Great Depression, but thrive throughout it. This is the incredible story behind Vaseline, and this is Learn Something New. Robert Augustus Chesborough was born in London, England on January 9th, 1837 to American parents. He was raised in New York City and studied chemistry, quickly deciding to move into the whaling industry, processing oil from sperm whales into a form of kerosene to be used in the lighting. But then, as we found out in my video on the oil industry's beginnings, Edwin Drake made the first oil well in Titusville, Pennsylvania. After reading through headlines about the discovery of crude oil deposits in Pennsylvania, 22-year-old Chesbro spent his life savings to travel from New York City to the oil fields in Titusville, meeting with the oil barons that were racing into the area to cash in on the new findings. While he was touring the oil fields, he noted men periodically had to halt operations to clean off a thick, dark goo from the oil rig pumps. The gooey substance was accumulating on the sucker rods used to draw oil to the surface. This was thought to be a completely useless waste byproduct of drilling, but some of the workers had started using the substance that they had nicknamed rod wax to help heal cuts and burns they got while working on the rigs. Jespero saw potential in the substance and asked if he could take some of it home with him. Those operating the oil rigs sent him home with buckets of the stuff, since they thought it was completely useless and were going to just throw it out anyway. Taking the samples back home to Brooklyn with him, he worked to purify the residue and eventually found that when he distilled crude oil, he was left with a similar substance as was found on the rods back in Titusville. Eventually, Chesborough developed methods for purifying the goo, screening it through bone black, a kind of charcoal made from the charred skeletal remains of animals. After spending years perfecting his extracting technique, Chesborough began using himself as a guinea pig, cutting and burning himself so he could treat his self-inflicted wounds with his newly created colorless, odorless gel. And nearly a decade after his initial trip to Titusville, he was able to successfully convert the rod wax residue from petroleum processing into a thick, oily, pasty substance that was semi-solid in appearance, unobjectionable in odor, according to the patent for the process of making usable petroleum jelly that was filed in 1872. He came up with the name Vaseline by combining the German word for water and the Greek word for oil with the addition of I-N-E for a scientific sounding ending. He had actually opened the factory for creating the Vaseline in 1870, two years prior to his patent being granted, but had an extremely hard time selling any because pharmacies just didn't want to buy it. So after his patent was approved, he tried a different strategy, traveling around New York and giving away samples at roadside demonstrations of his experiments. This is believed to be one of the first instances in history of the now common marketing strategy of giving away free samples, and the tactic worked extremely well. Before long, Chesborough's roadside customers were heading to their local pharmacies looking for refills of the seemingly miracle product. Of course, the pharmacist had none, having already turned Chesborough away, but they began ordering it in droves from then on, following demand to a T. Over the next year, Vaseline began appearing in newspapers, especially those around New York City, talking about how it could be used for toilet purposes, chapped hands, lips, sunburns, mosquito bites, shaving, and soap basically making the claim that no matter what you needed, Vaseline could probably help in some way, and people bought into every single claim. By 1874, stores reported selling over 1,400 jars of Vaseline a day. It was clear that Vaseline's extraordinary early success came from its use as a medicine, which is somewhat ironic considering that the vast majority of the medical claims Chesborough was claiming it had didn't really exist. 
You see, Chesborough submitted Vaseline to a range of scientific and medical societies and displayed it at various national and international expositions while receiving many awards for the product. In 1876, Vaseline got a major boost when it was endorsed by the London medical journal, The Lancet. This led to an increased interest from physicians in the United States, Britain, and the rest of Europe, and also marked the beginning of Vaseline's establishment as a global household staple. Following its general acceptance by the medical profession, Chesbro embarked on a general advertising campaign aimed at the public at large. And while, in reality, there wasn't a miracle cure to wounds that Chesbro was promoting, there was a benefit to it. What was extremely helpful to those who purchased it was the lack of impurities in the jelly in a sealed container that, when applied to a wound, tended to keep bacteria and dirt out of it by performing a protective seal, decreasing the chance of infection. But this wouldn't be found out for some time, and Vaseline could soon be found in medicine cabinets all across North America and quickly catching on in other nations all around the globe. And with it came innumerable people seeking new uses for the product. New mothers used it on their babies for diaper rash, and workers exposed to extreme cold weather used it to relieve their dry, chapped skin. And parents whose babies were diagnosed with an upper respiratory infection were told to let the babies swallow a warmed half teaspoon. The French would take this a step further, baking Vaseline into pastries in an attempt to find a shelf-stable fat that wouldn't spoil. This baking trend wouldn't last long, but parents would often continue feeding their children a spoonful of Vaseline well into the 1900s. But Chesborough would soon make an alliance that would really help him accelerate his growth. In 1881, Chesborough's company became majority owned by the Standard Oil Trust, established by John D. Rockefeller in 1870. This alliance proved to be mutually advantageous as Chesborough was a lucrative outlet for petroleum byproduct and Standard Oil gave Chesborough a reliable source of supply as well as enhancing protection from competing products that appeared on the market, at least until the Standard Oil Trust was broken up in 1911. But that wouldn't deter Chesborough's nephew, Oswald Kaman, who succeeded Robert when he retired in 1909. Separation from Standard Oil meant that the Chesboro Manufacturing Company lost its guarantee supply of the raw materials, and this led to the manufacturers of Vaseline petroleum jelly being temporarily discontinued in 1920. But the directors of the company appeared to have been aware and planning for the change. In 1919, Chesborough had raised additional funds by issuing 5,000 shares at $100 a share. The directors also proposed to increase the powers of the company by allowing it to explore and drill for petroleum and other related products, producing and manufacturing petroleum products, buying other companies, and doing business in other American states and in foreign countries to help fill the holes that Standard Oil's separation left. In 1920, it used some of the capital it had raised to acquire controlling interest in several oil companies, thereby giving it guaranteed access to the raw materials it needed, maintaining interest in many of these companies until 1948. And in 1921, Chesborough issued another 5,000 shares at $100 a share, citing the need to increase expenditure on plant and manufacturing capacity, improving its marketing facilities, and ensuring its product supply. Subsequently, in 1923, additional manufacturing capacity was opened in McKee Rocks, Pennsylvania, and this helped the company service its growing customer base. And all of these things would accumulate to shield the company from the worst of the Great Depression, allowing it to maintain profitability and dividend payments throughout the entirety of the Great Depression. But eventually, their leading products would be in the beauty industry specifically their main Vaseline item, a hair cream, a lip balm, and shampoo. But because of the increased competition in the pharmaceutical and cosmetic industries during the 1950s, combined with the need to engage in expensive television advertisements placed further pressure on the Vaseline product line, eventually leading them to merge with Pond's Extract Company in 1955, which would then be purchased by Unilever in 1987, the company that still owns and produces Vaseline to this day. As for Robert Chesborough himself, 
he was certainly obsessed with his creation, at one point getting a severe case of the flu and ordering the nurse to cover him from head to toe in Vaseline. He recovered and lived to be 96 years old, claiming a few years before he died that he had been eating a spoonful of Vaseline every single day to keep him healthy, though in actuality it's extremely unlikely to have helped at all. Still, while humorous, it's also a good reminder that Chesborough was a true believer in the product he created, unlike so many snake oil salesmen at that time. He believed so much in the product he created that he would do anything to get it in the hands of millions. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.